Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk show is supported by PTU Clinic. Visit ptuclinic.com. Adria's Restaurant and Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. For more information, their website is adriasrestaurant.net. And the Boston Athletic Academy at bostonathleticacademy.org. the news stations, 1320 AM, WARA. I'm Catherine Conley, a.k.a. KC, with Lucy Cabral, Sportsmaster Justin Ferreira, Dominic Damiano, Alex Mayo, and uh, Nick. What's his last name? We got we to gotta, we gotta yell out the door. Nick, what's your last name? We're going to get Nick in it's here. It's actually uh, a 30 second. Sec- so. Yeah, it's a 30 yeah, second yeah, delay. Yeah, yeah, Alexa yeah. hasn't caught up with us yet. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're absolutely yeah, right. Yes, pretty exciting. Nick is from yeah. uh, Curry College, and yep. I just had a tiny chat with him, but uh, I'm going to step out during the second half hour after I'm done playing paparazzi. Oh, yes. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, get him in here, get him on the, uh, on the microphone, and have a little chat with him. I think there that'll go. be good. I think that's a great idea. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. So we are waiting for uh, Manny DeBarros from Brockton High School. He is the new Brockton High School head basketball coach taking off for taking over for Coach Bowen. And uh, I had the privilege, and and Catherine had the privilege of covering, watching them play the boys' uh, BR team. And I believe this should be, if I did this right, <laughs> and it says DeBarros, if I did this right, this should be Manny DeBarros. Is this Manny DeBarros? Yes, Coach DeBarros, yes. Coach, how are you? Thank <laughs> you. We were just bragging about you. You couldn't have timed it any better if you tried. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. Are you, are you able to hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you good. I'm actually going to turn up my gain here. Hold on one second. Yeah, I can barely hear him. Hey, Coach, how are you? This is Lucy Cabral. Hi, Lucy. How are you? I'm go. good. I'm That's good. Better. Kind of a soggy day out there, but perfect for yeah. uh, for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Coach. Per- it's, it's Catherine. It's, it's, per- it's, it's perfect for radio, actually, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Coach. It's Catherine Conley. I did the camera that night. How oh, are you? I'm good, Catherine. How are you? Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. And then what, we have one more. Yep. Hi there, Coach May. This is Justin Pereira, a.k.a. the Sportsmaster. How are you doing oh, today? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Right. I like it, Justin. Sportsmaster. I like it. <laughs> Coach, congratulations on a, uh, on a great run so far. I, I mean, uh, I know you guys would rather want to rematch with Mansfield, if anything, if in a perfect <laughs> world. I know you don't I want another shot at Mansfield, but... Uh, I, I don't know if you saw our broadcast on our Facebook channel. Did you have a chance to watch that game against Bridgewater Raynham? I I honestly did not because um, I don't have Facebook. But the guys, um, you know, uh, you know, the guys told me, and I actually um, plan on watching it. I, I, I actually just came out on, I came out on YouTube, so I actually do plan on watching it again. To, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm about. To, I think I don't know if I put that game on YouTube yet, but that's. Yet, I'm definitely gonna have it on our Facebook page. I mean, our YouTube, okay. our YouTube page. But uh, if people want to call in, five zero eight two 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 one three two zero. We have the privilege to be joined by Manny DeBarros. He is a first year uh, coach. Oh, cover, coach. I'll get out of my mouth sooner or later. I'll blame <laughs> lack of, coach. I'm gonna blame lack of caffeine. <laughs> yes, hey, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first year coach, long time assistant coach, a coach and coach Bowen. So first, my first question, and did you guys did you guys yes. go over yeah. your questions together to make sure they didn't mix up? Oops, oh. we didn't do that. Um, oh no! I'll tell you, it's hard to take these Padawans under my wing, you know. They, <laughs> Padawans. <laughs> but, uh, hey, um, listen, no, no worries at all. I got, I, I got time, so no excellent. worries at all. Excellent. So why don't we do this? Why don't we? Um, why don't you just go over your resume, where you're from, where you grew up, how you got in the, how, and how you got to where you are right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, I'm Cape Verdean. So my, you know, my parents, are, you know, uh, immigrants came here uh, when I was one. I used to live in Virginia. Uh, from Virginia, I moved to Brockton when I was, I, I believe, five or six. And then basically was a Brocktonian, uh, you know, since since five or six. Uh, we, you know, my mother uh, struggled a lot, but we moved around 
uh, quite a bit in Brockton, but, you know, a Brockton kid went to Brockton Public Schools, uh, then went to North Middle School, uh, you know, played, and that's really kind of when I started playing basketball um, and really just fell in love with the game of basketball. Um, was coached by Coach George Lewis over there. We, we actually won uh, during my uh, eighth grade. We won the city title. We went undefeated, so that was always great. And then, um, yeah, and then, you know, I uh, went up to Brockton High School, uh, you know, uh, played under Coach um, uh, George, George McKay, the late George McKay, who uh, unfortunately passed away. Um, and then from there, I actually uh, played under Coach Bowen um, during, during my JV year. And then as a junior, was on varsity under, under Coach Ortiz. And then my senior year, um, was captain and, and, and played under Coach, you know, Coach Vic Ortiz. Uh, both years uh, uh, on varsity, we had good teams. We made it, you know, made it to the tournament. But both years got knocked out, if I believe correctly, by um, English. They had a very good team during that, you know, during that year. And, and then I graduated in '98, uh, class of '98, and then I ended up going to Fitchburg. Uh, played uh, played there my freshman year. Kind of s- sort of tried to play sophomore year, but honestly, I couldn't handle both in terms of just uh, sport and and being a student. So really just kind of focused on, on, on being a student and, and, and really just stop, stop playing. And then from there, um, I, had to, uh, you know, had, had the privilege of coming back to Brockton High School, I believe in 08 or 09, um, as a guidance counselor. So right now I'm currently a, a bilingual guidance counselor in the Yellow Building. Um, and so I you know, started working at Brockton High School as a guidance counselor. And then I would say maybe my second year at Brockton High School or third, and a position opened up for uh, JV basketball um, um, under Bowen, and, and I applied, got in there, um, and then was coaching for you know coaching JV for maybe three or four years, and then had, I believe, my second child, um, and that's when I you know stepped down for that year just because it was just too much, and I you know had to kind of handle just you know family matters, um, and then you know uh, came back and, and, and started coaching freshmen. And then from there, the opening um, opened up again for JV, so it went back to JV. And then this year, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, last year with coaches last year, um, it was, I was under the impression that he was going to come back because, you know, that's what he had kind of told us. But, but I think because of COVID and just everything going on, um, coach kind of reached out to me and just said, hey, you know, um, you know I'm going to put in the paperwork to, to kind of step down, um, which, again, for me was – uh, it was bittersweet because I really wanted Coach Bowen to get that uh, chance to uh, win a state title. I know how dedicated he, he, you know, he's been to Brockton, Brockton sports, but especially Brockton basketball. I mean, I played under him. I know, you know, I know how much he loves basketball and and just the the young men that he's coached over the years. Um, and so it was it was tough to kind of see him go that way because I really wanted him to get a chance, especially with our team. We have a bunch of seniors, um, so we were looking forward to the state tournament. Uh, but uh, but unfortunately, with everything that happened, um, you know, it, it, it you know it kind of uh, sped up it, uh, him stepping down. And so from there, yeah, uh, that's kind of how I got into the position. To be honest with you, so. So it sounds like Coach Bone has been there for a long time, uh, over oh, ten yeah. years, maybe. Oh, over. Um, I would say I think he was a JV coach for like over twenty years. And oh then wow. Was a, yeah, wow. and then was a. And then was the varsity coach for 13. So he was, I mean, literally almost 40 years of his life was, uh, you know, Brockton basketball. So that's why I said, you know, for me, I would love for him to get that one more chance to, to you, know, at the, you know, at the tournament. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. So. Mm-hmm. Well, we wish him well. He, uh, he's oh, now retired. Yes. <laughs> Good for him. Yes, absolutely. So. That's great. All right, you guys can go. You guys get just play. Go ahead. I actually wanted to ask you, Coach, Please. what what is it what is it like coaching at your alma mater? Oh my goodness, um, it's a dream come true. To be very honest with you, because uh, Brockton sports and, and just the community of Brockton means everything to me. Um, you know, it's it's where you know it's where I became a man. It's where I formed my identity. Um, and, and 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 to be honest, it's, it's I, I mean I just have a, a, a real big passion for for the city of Brockton. I mean I. I've, I've worked in, in nonprofit organizations and, and, and done diff- different things um, for the city of Brockton. And so to be able to 
uh, play there as a, you know, as a student coming up, and then to now be able to coach the alma mater and, and kind of take the, um, you know, the lead reins on everything. Uh, I, honestly, there's there's moments where I really have to pinch myself and kind of say, wow, like am I really the varsity coach? <laughs> um, yeah, it's just really a dream come true. I would have never. I didn't go searching for it, to be honest with you. I honestly just wanted to give back to the community. I love basketball. Um, I just want to help young men grow and, and so you know and, and enjoy the game that gave so much for me. And, and, and to be honest with you, um, yeah, it, it's just it's still not it, – it's still, you know, it might take me a while to kind of still settle in and, and say, wow, I'm, still, <laughs> I'm the varsity coach for Brockton. So, but, but uh, yeah, but to answer your question again um, – it means everything. It really does. It means everything because because I, I love the city of Brockton. I, I love Brockton sports, and, and, you know, I bleed red and black. So, for me, it just it, 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 it really is everything. Cool. All right. Um, my first question for you, May, is can yeah. you explain what uh, your basketball and track background record was like from 1998? It, in terms of, like, a record in terms of, like, like – how were we? Like in terms yeah, of yeah, how you were. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of going though. back there, huh? Sports <laughs> yeah. <Western>? yeah. <laughs> um, well, I know that you know uh, for track, I believe ninety seven, ninety six, we won the state title uh, for our track team under Coach Bill Jennings. Um, we had a fantastic track track program, and still do have a fantastic track program. Right now, Coach Fidalgo is actually the uh, uh, head person for the for the boys, and and um. Yeah, no, I mean, track, in terms of track, we were always competitive, always, always, um, um, in terms of record-wise, always competing. Uh, for, for our Brockton years, I would just say that I don't, I, it's really hard for me to recall in terms of our record. I mean, we had a winning, you know, uh, a winning record. Um, I, but I, can't, like, I couldn't tell you, like, like, if we were 17 and 7 and stuff like that. I, I just couldn't, honestly, like, I, I just can't remember that far back, to be honest with you, Justin. Sorry. It's totally fine. All right, we are going to step away. We are going to take our first break. If sure. you If you uh, want to call in that's listening around around the state at 508-222-1320, we have the privilege of having new Brockton boys basketball coach Manny DeBarros. We'll be back with more right after this. Hi, this is Megan Chase of Jack Conway Real Estate. Jack Conway has been providing top quality real estate professionalism since 1956. I take personal pride to ensure that my clients are happy with the services I provide. It is my job to make sure that you are fully involved and fully informed and have all the information to make the right real estate decisions for you and your family. Please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to be a resource for you. I can be reached at 774-240-7707 or via email at mchase at jackconway.com. I'm always happy to assist you with your real estate needs. Welcome to Physical Therapy U. I'm Kelly Duggan, doctor of physical therapy and the owner of PTU Clinic. Here at PTU, you're more than a patient and we're more than physical therapy. We offer massage, physical therapy, occupational therapy, personal training, and sport-specific performance training. We treat people and athletes of all ages and all levels of experience. Our beautiful 4,500 square foot facility located at 75 Scotland Boulevard in Bridgewater, Mass. is unlike any clinic you've seen. Our large space along with our new COVID guidelines allow us to treat you in the safest way. Your success in meeting your goals is our top priority. Whether you're recovering from a surgery or you're elevating your performance, we are the right clinic for you. Call us at 508-697-2000 or email us at ptuclinic at gmail.com. Check out our website at www.ptuclinic.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fort Sheep Sports Talks. We are continuing to highlight the Bruxham Boys basketball coach, Coach Manny DeBeers. Hello, Manny. Are you still with us? Absolutely. All right. My, my second question for you is, what do you want to teach your basketball players on and off the court? That's a, that's a great question, Dominic. Uh, for me, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest things is to play hard, uh, definitely on the court. 
um, and then being, you know, being a good teammate. I think it's really important uh, to be a good teammate, whether you're, you know, whether you're a starter or you're someone who's coming off the bench. Uh, being a good teammate is, is, is just, I mean, people feed off energy, so just positivity. And then, um, you know, on and off the court, for me, the, the biggest, I, one of the biggest things is character matters. Um, I, you know, my goal is to help these young men understand that, you know, I'm going to hold them accountable. Uh, what they do on and off the court it matters. So that means that in school, um, out of school, um, I want them to just develop good characters. I want, you know, I want people to be able to um, look at, our, you know, look at our basketball roster or, or our group and say, hey, those are some, some, you know, those are some young men who play hard um, and, and play the game the right way. And, and you know, in the classroom or, or in school, uh, you know, carry themselves with that same kind of um, that same kind of character in terms of just treating, you know, uh, you know, adults with respect, um, you know, you know, being polite, things of that nature. Because, again, um, preparing them, using basketball to show them that, um, you know, life is, you know, life is bigger than basketball. And so what you do on and off the court really does matter. So that, and then I think for me, uh, playing with joy. I just want them to love basketball and, and just kind of love what they do. Uh, don't worry about, you know, you know how many minutes you're getting or, 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 or if you're scoring 10 or 15 points and all that stuff. Those things are individual stuff. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's about us trying to win as a group um, and us trying to develop the program, you know, uh, you know, every day. So that's kind of those things that I want to focus on, to be honest. That's an excellent answer. Uh, right, it's an <laughs> honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> Very honest. Um, hey, and I, especially I, well, in these I mean, COVID I, times, I mean, how uh, how are the kids adjusting um, to playing under such rules and regulations and masks and and all six question. feet apart? I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's got to be difficult. It is. It is. It is. And you know, honestly, I, I feel bad for them. I know how much they'd love to play in front of their their friends, in front of their family, um, which is why you know I'm grateful for media in terms of just having you know um, you know the capability of of recording their games live and and how the, you know uh, different schools are broadcasting it live in the moment. That to me is really cool. I love that because uh, these kids. I mean, honestly, I couldn't ask for a better you know group of young men. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there, in the beginning, it was an adjustment because, again, you're asking, uh, you know, 17, 18-year-olds, 16-year-olds to put masks on the whole time. And a lot of times they want to, you know, pull it down because they're sweating and, you know, in terms of breathing. So mm-hmm. it is hard. I will say, you know, our AD, um, Mr. Carroll, did an excellent job of getting us under, you know, some Under Armour sports masks. And, and those, you know, and that's really helped a lot because, you know, those masks are very flexible, um, you know, the kids are able to breathe, much, you know, much better in it. Uh, you know, they're more performance driven, so it really helps a lot. And, and I think this, I, I think once you kind of set, I think for me early on, it was really just saying, hey, listen, you, you've had a lot of people in the community kind of um, go out of their way to try to help you have a season. And so, you know, in life, there's going to be circumstances like that you can't control. And so, what's the end goal, right? I mean, like. The end goal is that you want to have a season. Well, with that, you can make adjustments. Mm-hmm. And so I think once you talked about that, you're kind of just saying, hey, this is what life is, right? There's ups and downs. There's things that comes up. How are you going to adjust to it? How are you going to, you know, um, you know, are you going to let this take away from what, you know, the end goal is? Or, you know, or are you going to focus on that? And so I think once they kind of got that mindset, and again, it's all about the mindset. Um, once they realize that, hey, you know what? Yeah, he's right. Like, hey, our goal is to play basketball. Like, you know, and it, it's provided to us. Yes, you know, it might be different. Yes, we have to kind of hand sanitize every single time. Yes, we have, you know, coaches taking our temperature when we come to the door. Yes, we got to wear masks. Yes, we got to pick, you know, pick it apart when we're drinking water. And, you know, all these different things. But, I mean, at the end of the day, when, when they're on the court, I honestly, we all forget about it. You know, we all forget about COVID and we just kind of, we just play basketball. And that's the thing that, you know, um, that COVID can't take away from us. It, you know, it, it's that, that joy, that desire to compete, to be together and, and, and that camaraderie. And, and I think, you know, um, anybody who's on a sports team will tell you they, they love that family feel, that, that relationship. Oh, that, absolutely. This, yeah, that competition. And mm-hmm. so, 
Yeah, they loved it. They loved it. So, you know, it is what it is. That's so. great. Everyone's adjusting and um, be able to share their talents out on the court. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I actually wanted to add to Lucy's question. So. Sure. So, is it a lot different uh, coaching coaching your players with no fans in the stands during this time? Uh, yeah, for sure. No, for sure. Because, I mean, when you have your I mean, especially, uh, you know, broadcast fans, they're so, they're so passionate. So when, you, so when you're home, it's so different because it's just you, you have to muster up your own energy, you know? And, and that's something that we talked about, too, like in practice. Like, hey, guys. We, you know what I mean? Like when you're off the court, you, 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 you know, we're talking, we're, you know, uh, you know, showing joy. Hey, you know, clapping, you know, clap, clapping. So like in practice, we try to like clap a lot and kind of like muster up energy during drills and stuff like that. Just to kind of like get guys into that mental state. But it is different. It is different. Absolutely. When you look up and there's, you know, nobody there uh, or like, you know, teams making a run, you know that your fans would try to like cheer you on or, or, or heckle the you know heckle the opponent stuff like that. So it's absolutely different, and you miss it. They miss it. But again, um, you know they love basketball. You know I love basketball. So it, like you adjust, you do adjust. So. Yeah, coach, I have a question about your roster. If absolutely. So um, I'm a big I'm a big Lane fan. <laughs> and I'm also a big Reed fan, and I said that awesome. last year when I. Uh, well, I'll be going back with, I don't know how the schedule is going to work out, but I'm hoping to get back there and cover your games over at BCA TV. Um, so how is Lane and Reed as uh, uh, academically? Are they out, have they been talking to scouts? Or? Yeah. Um, I, Isaac, uh, you know, Isaac, Isaac is so, you know, it's more than, me, you know, um, middle in terms of his GPA. Yeah. Um, I think he's. I feel like he's more like in a 2.5 kind of range GPA. I know that he is looking at different colleges right now. Um, Nate Vaughn, because he's a two-sport athlete, um, he, you know, he's being looked at different, you know, in, in terms of colleges, absolutely. Um, you know, in terms of a small D2, um, definitely D3 in terms of, in terms of um, for both. And so, really, he has options as well. It's just a matter of kind of what they decide to do. But again, both. Both great kids. I mean, Navon's been a four-year starter, so he's just a stud in terms of an athlete. Oh, yes, just, he is. Uh, he, he, yeah, and honestly, he's a quiet leader. You know, he's not one that's like rah-rah. He's a quiet leader, but just one of those guys that, like, he wants to learn. He's a sponge, um, lead by example. Just just a great guy to, you know, great guy to inherit as a first-year coach, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> good, great point. Um, yeah, and so, you know, and I think just passionate, um, you know, in terms of Lane. He's just a passionate, you know, passionate player. I had him, you know, the, you know, the good part about this roster is that, to be honest, I had almost all these guys as freshmen. And so it, 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 it kind of comes full circle for me. So, again, you know, when people ask me, like, how does it feel, I couldn't have asked for a better scenario where, you know, I get to coach the, you know, the same players, almost the same players who I had freshman year, and to see their development – um, in, in terms of maturity, in terms of basketball knowledge, to just have, you know, character, stuff like that. It's just, it, it, again, it's just a joy to coach. They really are. I mean, they, you know, our practices, I mean, they just compete. They go at it. And they know that I love it when they go at it in terms of practices and just go at each other in terms of competition and just, you know, trying try to get the best out of each other. So, um, and, and then for me, this is my first year coaching Avon because then, you know, obviously as a freshman, he went right to varsity. So, um, to get a chance, you know, to coach him has been a joy too. So it's just great. It's just great. And then we have a, um, we have an up and coming freshman in terms of Cameron Montero, who's just, again, who I feel like is just that next superstar for us, who, um, as he develops, will definitely be a leader for us. We had a, you know, we have a transfer in, um, Nico Lutz, who, who came from, um, I believe, Cardinal Spellman, and he's just a ball of energy. Just oh, that's a blessing. Kid. When I saw him on the court, I was like, where the heck did they get this stud? Yeah. Oh, listen, I mean, talk about inheriting <laughs> great fortune. I mean, you come in and, I mean, not knowing that you're going to be the varsity coach, you, you, you know, you get to be, you know, the varsity coach, and now you get these studs. You're like, wow. You know, and that's why, again, you know, you, you, know, you, you would hope for the state, th you know, the state tournament to be, you know, to be played, but obviously with everything going on, it's not going to happen. But again, um, you know, but again, just just a, a, a great group of fantastic guys. Really, just 
really, really great guys that I just I look forward to coaching and, and, and practice every day. I really do. So, and, and I mean it. So. Well, one of the other things I wanted to mention is that that just proves to you how they, these kids were raised. Because none yeah. of them are disrespectful. They cherish every word that comes out of your mouth. They, they're very, I mean, they're, they're athletes. I mean, you still got Xavier. He's one of your sleeping giants with Montero yeah. on that roster. Yeah. You know. And, 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 and Vanilla is one of those kids, like Xavier, who fantastic um, soccer player. And, and actually, I believe he, he's, he's about to commit to assumption, I believe. I don't want to, like, you know, jump the gun. But I know that they definitely want him for, 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 for both sports, for basketball and for, for soccer. And, and he's one of those kids that you just love. You know, he, 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 he has that passion and, and just a great kid. Our point guard, Noah, um, Ali, will, you know, just a quiet leader, great academically in terms of, you know, honest kid. And, and then, you know, like, um, you know, just you know, kind of going down, the, going down the roster, Sean Goss, he's one of those kids off the bench who – I had him freshman year, um, and has been a joy to see because you know he's one of those success stories that that I will always go back to because his sophomore year I cut him as a JV coach, wow. and, and he's one of the hardest cuts I ever had in my life. I, I cried to be honest with you because I knew because it was just hard because because you know but as a coach you make those you know yeah. decisions that, like, again it's those decisions that you make and then I remember talking to him and just saying hey listen if you work at it. And actually, it was him and George Pyrie, another kid who's on my team. And I said, hey, listen, guys, if you work at it, you come back next year, I promise you, if you work at it and you get better, hey, there's a spot for you. And and, and to be honest with you, Sean and George, they they worked their butt off that that, that, that sophomore year. And, and, and junior year, they came back and they earned it. They earned it. And I was probably one of the most happiest, you know, uh, people, you know, you know, person in terms of just seeing it. And now you have a kid who got cut sophomore year who's contributing both him and George you yeah. know in, in terms of role players who come in they don't they don't fuss about playing time they, they just hey yes coach okay coach they come in and just play hard and just it's again it's just a joy it really is it, 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 it's a you know and, and I tell them all the time hey guys this is what you know like this is what it's about you know right like you you hit hardships things happen but you continue to just move forward so. absolutely coach we're going to take our second break we can Still oh, hold yeah. on to you? Is that okay? Absolutely. Listen, I told you, I'm not going anywhere. So that's <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to take our second break. We have the no pri- worries. All right, very good. All right. Okay. Again, we got uh, Coach Barrows on the line. You can call him when we get back at 508-222-1320. He is a new, new, boys bo- new boys basketball coach over at Brockton High. We'll be back with more right after this. A popular destination, Adria boasts a breathtaking panoramic view of nature in all of its glory in each and every season. Upon visiting their 200-seat restaurant, you will see three distinctive areas. The lounge area includes their spacious 26-seat dining bar, high-top tables, and dining tables, all viewing access to seven high-definition televisions and three Kino monitors. A second area set apart from the lounge offers booths and tables to accommodate every member of the family. The third area, a few steps down and separated from the main restaurant by windows, is known as the fairway room. It is surrounded by a wall of windows offering not just a fabulous view, but a feeling of serenity and tranquility. It is a favorite spot for lunch, dinner, and functions. It is a perfect for a romantic dinner, a casual family gathering, business meeting, or any large group for that special occasion. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fort Deep Sports Talk. And we are going to continue highlighting Coach Maine Averos and many. I'm going to continue with another question that I have for you, and that is, what are you looking forward to the most with your new position in this job? Man, some loaded questions. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one, Justin. Yeah, seriously, Justin. Uh, honestly, I'm uh, developing the program. Um, and, and, and by that, I mean, I really want to be able to connect more. Like, I really want to have a, a – like, I want to grow the theater system, to be honest with you. Um, I want to be able to connect more with the middle school or junior high coaches um, and kind of have, you know, us be on the same page. I want to meet with, you know, the travel or the AAU coaches and kind of like, again, be under the same – you know, and, and, and speak the same language and, 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 and help develop our players because really that's – I think that's where some programs 
um, you know, are you know, are ahead of us right now, to be very honest with you, you know? Um, and, and for me, that's an area that's really concerning and of importance. I want to be able to develop our program where, you know, the, the same language is being, you know, taught or at least the same skill development is being taught. So when the guys come up um, to Brockton, they know what the expectations are. They know what they should be working on. And, 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 and that includes even, like, summer programs as well, off-season conditioning programs where – we have a you know summer program where the guys are playing basketball somewhere locally in Brockton or, or going somewhere else. A lot of these other schools, I will say, you know, they have they they have a very good system that, I, you know, as a coach, I I envy and I look at you know and, and, and want to model. And you know, I'm not ashamed to say that because I mean, how else do you get better by just you know what I mean? Like, like you get better by seeing someone else and say, okay, how are they doing it so I can get to that level too? You know. Um, and, and to me, that's really what I want to focus on. I also want to focus on also just, um, you know, that community building in terms of just doing stuff in the community, whether it's, you know, um, you know volunteering, uh, whether it's, like, again, just giving back, um, you know, teaching these guys, the, you know, the importance of just, um, you know, community and, and, and building up, you know, building up other people, you know, besides themselves and, and, and connecting with parents and, and, and really just, Again, just showing them that, you know, someone didn't care. And then also focusing on, on their grade. You know, as a guidance counselor, I'd be remiss to say that, you know, uh, grades do matter at the end of the day. And so, yes, you know, I want you to play sports. Yes, I want you to compete and, 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 and win games. But at the end of the day, too, I want you to, I want you to use basketball to open doors, you know. And, and that's really even going to a D3 school. I, you know, I think sometimes – kids kind of fall in love with that D1 or nothing kind of mentality, and they don't realize that, no, listen, D2, D3, you know, junior, you know, junior college in terms of, you know, community schools, just as, you know, just as competitive, and, and everyone can't make it to D1, you know? Um, and I think I'm always preaching that to the guys. I mean, they can tell you that this freshman year. I've always told them that. Like, hey, guys, everyone's not going to make it, you know, make it to D1. But you can make it somewhere else, you know, and, and, and use basketball or, or just sports in general to open doors for other areas of life. So I, I think that's really kind of my goal and focus for the future. It's going to take some time, obviously, um, but it's step by step, you know, uh, you know, you know, and, and hopefully each year I try to focus on one piece of the pus, you know, puzzle and kind of connect it all together. So that's really my focus moving forward. I'll tell you, it couldn't have said any better if I tried. <laughs> I, one thing about you, Manny, you do not leave anything out. That's for no, sure. You well, must be one well, heck of a guidance counselor. You got <laughs> big plans. <laughs> well, well, you know what it is, Dominic. I just really, I, I, I try to be really honest and transparent. I really do, you know. I, and, and I think that's where I think my players understand that about me. And I think that's why they play for me. Because I just, you know, I try to be honest with, with love. You know what I mean? And, and oh, yeah. Try mm-hmm. to be, yeah, and just, and, and just, I don't know, like, be that mentor that I know so many people have been for me. And, and, and I think just. Sometimes with, with, with young men or young women in terms of sports, but, you know, I mean, part of that in terms of being a coach is being a mentor and just being, you know, and just, just say, hey, listen, right now you're wrong. You know, hey, right now that's not, you know, the kind of attitude that you should, you know, that you should display. I mean, does every athlete or every kid, you know, connect to it or respond? No. But a majority, you know, for me, I think what I've learned is, hey, players, players play for you when they know that you care, you know, True. and they know that Absolutely. you care about them. Yeah, and, and for me, that's really my message, too, is that, hey, listen, you have a guy in here that, that's going to care for you no matter what, and I'm going to go to bat for you. Now, listen, you know, at the end of the day, though, I'm going to hold you accountable. Right. And so, you know what I mean? So if you're going to act a fool or, 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 or miss, you know, practice or do something during a game that, hey, you know what I mean, like isn't, isn't, isn't a character play, then you know what? I'm going to hold you accountable to that, too. And, and, and you know, and, and that's going to be on you as well because you need to know that, that there's consequences in life, whether, you know what I mean, good and bad, good and bad. So. Right. No, no, and nicely I, said. And I know yeah. I've, I've seen it. I've, se- I've seen it. I've seen you in action. This year. Catherine's seen you in action. This year. You're always talking to the players. You might come up for a breath or two, but you're always making sure. <laughs> you know, you're always making sure that, you know, you know, they know you know what's going on and, Remind them what could happen. I was like the same thing. I coached small. I coached CYO, and oh, a lot, nice. a lot of my, a lot of my kids ended up playing for Taunton High. But I was the same oh, way. Oh, that's awesome. That's you know awesome. what I mean? And yeah. So it was a lot of fun. And I do the same thing in football too. I coach freshmen over at BP. Mm-hmm. 
But hey, uh, that's awesome. It's a lot of fun. So I know yeah. Captain has a question. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you have a favorite basketball player, and why is that? <laughs> <laughs> This might get me in trouble with my players, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> no. Can I beep it out? Huh? No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. Um, honestly, you know, it, 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 it might be cliche or like a lot of people might like the same person, but for me right now, it, it's actually LeBron, and I get into a lot of, you know, squabbles with, with, with my guys in terms of stuff. For me, it's LeBron, and, not, and, and, and it's more so because of what he does off the court and, his, and, and how he carries himself, to be honest with you. Mm. I, I think for someone who's been in the limelight since his, you know, honestly, since, since high school, and to carry himself and conduct himself, you know, in the manner that he has, um, it, it, you, you know, again, say, say what you want in terms of on the court. Yes, I know sometimes there's theatrics and sometimes he flops and does all that stuff. I get that. But in terms of just how he, how he holds himself accountable, um, his philanthropy, like, I don't know, I just... I appreciate that in an athlete because I don't see it very often. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and he's someone who, yeah, and, 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 and the fact that like he's just you know someone who's about family values and stuff like that. You know, that's what I am too. And so I, you know, family, community, I love that stuff. And so I, I, I appreciate what he does in terms of showing guys that hey, there's different ways of being an athlete. Like you don't have to be the prototypical what people think that you should be type of athlete. So for me, that's the reason why. I mean, I don't, I don't root the Lakers. I just, you know, as a Boston guy, I obviously root the Boston. But I like, but I, you know, I appreciate him as an athlete in terms of what he does off the court. All right. Um, I have one more final question for you, Manny, and that yeah, is, definitely. what was your athletic career at Fitchburg University like? <laughs> You know, it was short but sweet, to be honest. <laughs> you, know, sweet. you know, I mean, no, I mean, honestly, you, and, and that's what I tell my players all the time. I'm like, you know, guys, you know, like, guys, you have no idea. Like, you think you know until you find out. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you don't know what you know, you know, until you know. So it's like you go in there thinking, hey, you're a hot shot. Hey, you know, I think a block and high. And then you go there and you get a piece of humble pie very quickly because, you know, you realize that, hey, you, you know, if your game needs to develop or, you you know, like there's areas of your game that has holes and, you know, you're on the bench. So for me, it, you know, I was a guy that I, I went in as a freshman. I barely played any minutes, um, you know, I, you know, again, but at the same time, you know, it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world because it just taught me, again, like 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 all athletes, you think that, that you're going to go D1 and go to, you know, the NBA or the WNBA or whatever, you know, like, like you just think that was, you know, that's your mentality. Um, and for me, it was, I had to, you know, I had to humble myself and then kind of, honestly, to be honest with you, I had to redefine myself in terms of kind of my goals and, and what I wanted to do with life because for so long I had thought, well, basketball was just it. And that's where mentors and other people come into play and say, well, well, you know, it's not going to work, so now you got to think of plan B. And that's kind of like the message I sent to my guys, too. I'm like, hey, guys, if plan A doesn't work, though, what's your plan B? And, and, and that's kind of, you know what I mean? Like, what's your plan C? Because that's how life works. And so, yeah, it was short but sweet, you know, but I loved it. And honestly, you know, there's a bunch of guys there that we, we played into murals, and I loved it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Great relationships. Uh, we played in some like crazy, and it was just a great experience. It really was. And, and you know, I, I really wouldn't change it because it made me who I am today. It, it, it helped shape me as well. So, so Mike, as far as going, uh, touching on college basketball, yeah. do you try to, um, you know, these guys, you know, the team you had now, and I know Coach Bowen. Actually, I've been trying to get Coach Bowen on this show for years, <laughs> and and something's <laughs> always come up or whatever. But I, I got a little payback when I got involved with BCA TV because I got him on the pregame last year, which, oh, was, nice. which was fun. Nice. But um, <laughs> as far as the speed of the game when they go to the college level, and that depending, you know, it does I don't think it really matters. You know more than I do. Division one, two, or three. Do you try to emphasize that how how fast things get when you get to college? Yeah. Yes, and, 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 how, and how much more physical it is and, and, and how, you know, and really the area that I want, I want them to like, and, and I kind of drill a lot actually in practice, and sometimes maybe I go a little bit overboard is the mental part. You know, like I, I'm really big on body language and all that stuff, especially like playing basketball, like, like playing sports. And so I really, I really get on them about that because it, it, it's just 
the mental part is where I really want them to, like, all my teams to, to, to improve. I want them to be mentally strong and not defeat themselves before their opponent, like, gets, you know what I mean? Like, like before they uh, verse their opponent. I think that's what I remember the most going to, like, you know, going to Pittsburgh was like, wow, like, just the mental aspect of it. And I wasn't prepared for it, to be honest with you. I really wasn't. I thought I was mentally strong. And then you go to college, you're like, ah, I'm not as mentally strong as I think I am, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know? And, and then, like, you kind of, like, you battle it, you know? You battle it, and then, the, you know, the physicality of, 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 of college is so much more. And so trying to get these guys to understand that, hey, you know, conditioning, taking care of your body, all those things matter if you're going to go to college and go play for wherever. So, yeah, for sure, for sure, absolutely, absolutely. All right, Coach, we're getting ready to uh, take our last break. Can we still hold on to you when we come back? Absolutely, man. I wouldn't go anywhere else. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we're going to step away. We have Manny DeBarros, the brand-new boys basketball coach for Brockton High. We'll be back right after this. Okay. Hello, this is Manny Dill Carmen from the 2007 World Series champion Boston Red Sox. World champs again. A sports analyst for Nessa. Along with my best friend Jose Diaz, we grew up in the city of Boston, a city that we truly love. Jose and I have always talked about giving back to the youth within our city. Therefore, we created the Boston Athletic Academy to move our passion to action. Our goal is to develop future student athletes in Boston by providing a safe location to offer educational and athletic needs. We are taking the next steps and looking forward for your support to reach our goal. Please visit the bostonathleticacademy.org for more information. Let's make a difference because success has no boundaries. Hey, welcome back. You are listening and watching on the Facebook channel uh, for Deep Sports Talk. And we are back. We have Manny DeBarros on the line. But first, I know Luce wants to give a quick shout out. Hey, everybody. I know my mom and uh, Lou and Tina are out there uh, listening to this broadcast. I just want to give a shout out. And um, I know they, they don't see me as much, um, <laughs> especially mom. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. Thanks for listening in. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Coach, you still with us? Absolutely. Good, everything's going good. I didn't blow anything up yet, so that's good. <laughs> so now we have another young man joining us, Nick. How do you see your last name? Uh, Lokovic. Lokovic. Polish. Polish-Irish. <laughs> Polish nice. And uh, he's coming up from Curry College, and he just reached out to us. Actually, him and I touched base last week. And, uh, you know, he wanted to check it out, see what was going on. He had a, he had a question to ask you before we step away. Yeah, Coach, I, I was just wondering, as far as uh, basketball philosophy, what do you think yours is as an offensive standpoint? Do you get shooters open? Do you press the fast break? Do you like to move the ball? What do you think makes you different from a co coaching aspect through offensive game plans? Yeah, it's a great question, Nick. Uh, for me, it's, de it's, def it's definitely uh, transition offense in, in terms of trying to like get the ball up the court and try to score off transition, you know, transition offense, but then also – um, yeah, feeding, feeding our shooters in the corners is a big one. Um, but then also really just sharing the ball. Um, I really, I'm not a big fan of hero ball. So it's really just kind of using, you know, using pick and rolls um, and, and getting the best shot possible. So yeah. whether that's a layup, whether that's a wide open three, um, it's, it's really, that's the philosophy. And then defensively, we don't, we want to make you work. Like we don't believe in giving anything up in terms of, you know, anything easy. easy we up. do press, like we do press here and there. But sometimes we're pressing, like, as you know, like, you give up easy baskets, and sometimes as a coach, that's, that's tough for me to, like, like you know. Especially uh, when you wear out your, your good players on a press when you need them for offensive yeah. defense. It's it's not always yeah. worth it. Maybe when you're down late in a game to come back, but unless you're down late, you're really not going to press unless you really that's, have to. That's exactly it. And so for me, I'm like, you know what, listen, I, I you know, and this is why I want, with me and, and my guys, our philosophy is, hey, listen, Every guy needs to be ready because, you know what, I'm going to try to get every guy in if I can. And if I can't, hey, listen, next man, I'll try my best to. But really, next man up. Like, it's really like, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, like Bill Belichick, hey, you know what I mean? Like, do your job. Yeah, every, everybody so, so, be ready to play. Absolutely. And so, for me, our philosophy is, hey, we're going to make the other team work and grind to get baskets. We're not going to give any, anything up easy. You know, now, and, and like you said, now if we're down, absolutely, we'll try to speed things up and try to kind of get, you know, easy baskets to turn you over. But but really, as a defensive guy, I like to make you work. Yeah, so. absolutely. 
All right, last question, Coach. This is uh, Nate course. Rollins. He's checking. Yep. He's on one of our beat writers. And he also oh, yeah. works for Channel hey, 7. Hey, How's it going, Nate? Yeah, he's actually listening on the podcast. I think he's okay. heading into the station. So okay. uh, no. his question is, who's one of the best programs in the state, do you think, right now in, in high school boys basketball? Wow, who's one of the best programs? In, I mean, obviously Mansfield, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have a great program. I would say, uh, you know, Newton North, um, you know, they have a very good program as well. I mean, those are those are two programs that we play consistently that I see. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so, and so I just know because, I, you know, like I know that they have feeder systems, that, you know, they have summer programs. So those are programs that, like, again, I'm, you know, Woodman Hanson, for instance, we played down a couple of years uh, last year. Yeah, they were uh, tough. They, were, they actually, oh, yeah, be, they actually won. They actually beat you guys at Hanson, I remember. Yes, yes. And Coach Rogers is doing an excellent job over there with his program, and, and, and he's a mentor for me. And, and, and does a very good job over there as well. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, um, again, um, Abington. I mean, there's, like, so many different clubs. I mean, it isn't just, D, you know, Division One. I. I mean, there's just good programs out there that Division Two, Division Three, that are just doing an excellent job, um, right. you know, with their programs. And, again, not that we're not doing a good job. I just want to improve and get better, obviously. Right. Like, that's the, that's the idea is that you always want to improve and strive to get better. Uh, absolutely. Coach, it was great to see you the other day. It's great to talk to you on the phone. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I hope go. I hope Coach Bowen feels bad about all those times he didn't come on. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great. He's a great guy. Great um, guy. But um, hopefully, I'll see you around over at the high school, or you know, somewhere around, maybe even back over at BR or something. And uh, stay in touch, please. Keep in touch uh, with us. Absolutely. And listen, I appreciate the dynamic four. It was a joy to talk to you all. Um, listen, happy new year and, and, and much, you know, and much success with the show. I love the energy. Thank you for just, you know, for inviting me and absolutely anytime. You got it. All right. Thanks you coach. Thanks coach. All right, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you. thank you all. You got all it. Right, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that is, was coach Manny DeBarrows, brand new basket boys, basketball coach up at Brockton high. But before we forget, we have to try to run this down. So what I'll do is I'll start and I'll let you finish. Okay, go ahead. All right, so let's fire up the music. We'll get it going. And here are your scores. Make sure I got it right. And there we go. All right, so leading off, we'll start with boys basketball. All these games were postponed. Well, in the Bay State Conference. Wellesley North, uh, Newton North, Weymouth Braintree, Natick Milton, uh, Needham Brookline, Waltham, Framingham, uh, and again, I already said Newton North, Braintree. We have one score, which was probably played the other day. Uh, Needham beat Walpole 55-45. Cape and Islands, all these games are postponed. Dennis Shamath, Barnstable, Sandwich, Falmouth, Rising Tide, Charter, Sturgis East, Monomay, Sturgis West. Moving on to the Catholic Conference, BC High, St. John's Prep, Shrewsbury was postponed. St. John's Prep beat Severian 65 46. Moving on to the Hawk boys, boys basketball. Uh, Franklin over King Phillip, 65 36. Oliver Rims beats Foxborough, 59 33. Mayflower, uh, Bishop Conley beats South Shore Christian, 80, 82 52. East Bridgewater loses to West Bridgewater, 60 to 59. South Shore Vogue Tech beats Holbrook, 57 43. And now my pad just, just reloaded again. Fantastic. All right, moving on <laughs> again. Oh, you know what? I should have just kept. I should have just. I should have just made the pay. I should have just printed the paper. All right, so and it just reloaded again. You know what? I think I'm all burnt out with that pad you, doing that. Yeah, want, maybe next time we should. You want me to it. want me to look up some scoreboard? Well, you know what's going on is that uh, it's actually fading, so this oh. ain't working. I I was just we were just testing it. The other day, we had all the scores going on, Nick. Yeah, and, cool. and we were in the lobby, and we just we were just going to town. We were having no problem. And I was just bragging to him, oh, look what <laughs> I can do with my thumb. I'm just going up and down. And all of a sudden, it just it just reloaded. Did it sound pretty good, Luce? Did it sound okay with the backup? Okay. So maybe we can try this one more time, and we'll start in the Patriot League. And camera action. Here we go. All right, Patriot League. All these games were postponed. Notre Dame, Hingham over Duxbury. Hingham, Marshfield, Pembroke, New- Newton, excuse me, North Quincy, Quincy. Sitchwick, Cohasset, Hanover, Marshfield, Duxbury, Dennis Shamath. All 
postponed. And continuing on, we go South Shore League, South, uh, Southeast Conference. It was, so South Shore Conference was, was, and why do we go to commercial? <laughs> All right, there we go. South Shore Conference, real fast, double overtime. It was Fairhaven over Wayham, 70-67. Seekonk over Bourne, 54-30. Uh, Dighton over Greater Bedford, Vogue, 66-33. Old Rocha, Pontiquet, postponed. Final, Somerset, Berkeley over Case, 60-40. to South Shore League, we might just be able to get this in right now, uh, just the boys today. Middleborough over Abington, 72-66. Cohasset East Bridgewater postponed. Mashby loses to Randolph, 62-31. Rockland beats Norwell, 61-37. And we already talked about the EB West Bridgewater sc um, score. Southeast Conference, Bridgewater Raynham over, over uh, New Bedford, I'm sorry, 62-52. Uh, Dartmouth and Brockton postponed. Tri Valley, finishing up to Tri Valley. Norwood over Med, uh, Medfield, 70 65. Hockington Westwood postponed. Dedham Do Dover Sherborne, 48 38. Millis over Medway, 51 34. And Bellingham and Norton are postponed. And we are slowly running out of time. We'll never get the girls in, but we'll, we'll switch around next week. We'll get the girls. And let me see, I also have an update from Nate Rome, senior captain, Nate Amato poured in 23 points, and Amory Jens, uh, Jameson and Abby Vital both added 14, as Whitman Hansen beat Duxbury 85 to 51. Senior, um, senior Cole Lavangie, 10 points, and Russell Vassell, 9 points. So that's a little more breakdown on the Whitman Hanson win over Duxbury. Thank you, Nate. Um, so what would you think, Nick? What would you think yeah, of the whole thing? Yeah, it was really good. Something I'd like to, you know, get to know more about and get to hopefully do more as I, you know, get to work, get to have the opportunity here. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It would be fun to have you. Be, it would be fun to have you. We haven't had a new person in a while, right? Yeah, it's been quite some time since it's, it's happened. It's been yeah. a long. It's exciting. It's exciting long to time, try, yeah. new, try new stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, Never. yeah really done too much in this in my own field you know what i mean yeah because i've worked a lot of jobs just to make money during college like i worked as a ca cafeteria i worked at dunkin donuts you I did it all at, like everybody else yeah, yeah. <laughs> right that's funny <laughs> okay so next week we have a different schedule next week we are going to highlight dance jazz tap gymnastics i thought it would be something different i think lucy would like that too so i mean it's a sport Oh, so gymnastics. Gymna kind of, no, not gymnastics. We're talking yeah. ballet because they actually go into a competition. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. They, oh, they okay. compete all over the country. Okay. So <laughs> Noreen McDonald, who runs her dance class out of Hanover, she's going to come in via the phone lines, and we're going to talk to some of her girls and, you know, the hard work they put it's in to compete. Stuff. Oh, it is, it's really difficult. So I thought that would be different. I don't know. She's 30 seconds later. Lucy's going to nod her head and agree with me. As soon as she, <laughs> as soon as she hears it on the, uh, as soon as she hears it on the, um, the Alexa. Yep, she, she's listening now. I can tell from her reaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, so yeah. as we went right, uh, uh, wind down, uh, Alex Mayer out doing his thing, doing the production in the lobby. Catherine Conley, I got to fix her uh, uh, press pass, a.k.a. KC. Justin Ferreira and Nick, who just jo joined in. Thank you, sir. Of course. So we will, we will catch you next time. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk show is supported by PTU Clinic. Visit ptuclinic.com. Adria's Restaurant and Banquet Facility of East Bridgewater. For more information, their website is adriasrestaurant.net. And the Boston Athletic Academy at bostonathleticacademy.org. This has been a presentation of 4 Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletics come first.